even groundwater is used as the most suitable drinking water source in a refugee situation. That is because groundwater is usually um, the highest in volume and it's also the safest water that is available, especially when we compare it to surface water, which is usually more polluted and also more easy to, dis to deplete. But if you want to drill a borehole in order to um, use the groundwater for our water supply system, we have to really understand the hydraulic characteristics of the groundwater resource. In order to, to do that, we would usually conduct a pumping test that will provide us important information about the borehole and the aquifer. By watching this video, you can learn which steps are important in designing a borehole, in contracting a borehole company and in carrying out a step drawdown pumping test. So first of all, there are two types of pumping test. Step drawdown pumping test, which we are currently hearing in the background, and the constant rate pumping test. To design a solar pumping scheme, you have to do a step drawdown pumping test in order to find the adequate dimensioning of your pump, both of your pump and the amount of solar panels you will need. You're doing the step drawdown pumping test to find the safe yield of your well. This is important because you don't want to empty your well and you don't want to expose the well screens to air which can destroy them. There are two different definitions of safe yield. There's the safe yield of the well, which means what is the amount of water that the well can deliver to you safely. By safely we mean without overusing, overexploiting the well and damaging the casing on the inside. Then secondly, there is the safe yield of the aquifer, which means how much water can we take out of the aquifer without depleting the aquifer or using it in an unsustainable manner. So the driller will measure the yield that he obtains under pressure uh, in the moment that the well is being drilled. It's a, basically a one-off measurement that is taken and it's an approximation of what the um, well can deliver you, but it will never give you precise enough information to base your calculations or the planning of your system, or your water supply system on this. If you do a step drawdown pumping test, you will receive several measurements. For example, you should do at least four steps and every time you are measuring how much water you can pump at a certain rate until you, you receive a stabilization. Stabilization means how much does the water go down until it does not go down further in the well. And then you take these single data points that you achieve every time stabilization is achieved for every water level. And when you have these, let's say, five, four, five, six data points, you can plot this on a graph and from the graph you can derive two types of information. One is the linear behavior of your well, the other one is the turbulent behavior of your well. And from this information you can derive um, an adequate pumping rate. What means adequate? It means that your pump should never be too big and not too small. If you have a too big pump, maybe you're wasting a lot of energy and wasting energy means wasting money. If you have a too small pump, you have made this very high capital investment of drilling a well. It's not, it's not cheap to drill a well. And then you are not taking out as much water as it could deliver. Plan the step, step drawdown pumping test. And in order to plan it, you should do a so-called equipment test. The equipment test will tell you what type of pump is adequate for your pumping test in itself. Here again, you don't want a too small pump, which will not give you a lot of information. And you don't want a too powerful pump, which would already exceed the safe yield. Because you want to determine rates that are probably around the safe yield in order to get the best information. You um, have to make sure that the inlay of the pump is not at the level of the screen, but it's either above in the plane casing or if that is not possible below below in the plane screen but don't forget that if you do this you would have to put a sleeve around your pump 
Once you have determined the maximum drawdown, you determine the flow rate that corresponds to the maximum drawdown. From this maximum flow rate, you are deriving the steps of your drawdown pumping test. For example, if you have determined your maximum drawdown, which corresponds to a maximum flow rate of 100 cubic meter per hour, you would plan your pumping rate such a way that, for example, if you're planning to make five steps, each step uh, of the step draw drawdown pumping test corresponds to 20 cubic meter. You would start with 20 cubic meter per, per hour, uh, 40 cubic meter per hour, 60 cubic meter per hour, and so on. I think, first of all, we should not forget that the moment a borehole is drilled is a unique opportunity to ob obtain information about the borehole. Some of the information you can only obtain in this moment and never later again. This is not true, of course, for the step drawdown pumping test, which, if it has not been done in a good way in the first place, it can always be repeated before you start to design your actual water supply system on bad pumping test. What I have observed looking at borehole drilling reports, including the pumping tests, first of all, an equipment test is hardly ever conducted. Secondly, every step of a pumping test is often not done until it, it reaches stabilization. And this is an important lesson for us as UNHCR WASH officers to learn, because drillers will usually be impatient and they would like to get their work done as fast as possible. So it's important that when already we're setting up the contract, we are including a certain time that the driller has to spend on observing each step of the pumping test. Because if you interrupt uh, the step of a pumping test too early before it reaches stabilization, you are not able to use the data and it will not give you any useful information for your further planning. When you make a step drawdown pumping test, it's important not only to have measurements on the very high yields, but also to measure the very low yields. That's because it allows you, uh, that is because it gives you information about the linear behavior of your well, which in turn provides information about the behavior of your aquifer. The higher yields that you're observing in a step drawdown pump pumping test gives you in itself more information about the well. But in the end, remember that you need, need to have both types of information to be able to use both your aquifer and your well in a sustainable manner. Borehole drilling is not a common task for every wash officer. Some people may have a background in hydrogeology, but others have different backgrounds. If you're looking for supporting material, that will help you in designing the contract with the drilling company. You can find it on wash.unhcr.org, which contains information about what to include into a drilling log, what to include into a well ID, and um, how to design a pumping test. The information from a step drawdown pumping test will also help you to monitor the behavior of your borehole over time and allow you to observe changes in the borehole or in the aquifer, which gives you information about whether there have been changes to the aquifer or if your borehole become, starts to deteriorate. If you store the information from the step drawdown pumping test and the borehole log, any person who is following in your position later on can look it up again. Therefore, we encourage all WASH officers and implementing partners to upload the information in the UNHCR DIS portal or borehole database, which allows us to store the information over time and compare it in the future to a previous pumping test.